Greater Peoria Sanitary District was formed in 1927 in response to a need to have wastewater collected and treated throughout the Greater Peoria area. Today, GPSD serves Greater Peoria through a series of sewer pipes that cover approximately 70 square miles and bring this wastewater to the Dar Street treatment plant. Two large interceptor pipes, and an interceptor pipe is simply a term for a very large pipe, bring eventually all of Peoria's and Greater Peoria's wastewater to the headworks of the treatment plant. So today's tour will begin in the pre-treatment building. And right before this pre-treatment building is where these interceptor pipes convene. And the first step in this process is removing any large limbs or tree trunks or things that may have made its way into the system out of the treatment process. These large bar screens, which you see here on your screen, start to remove these large items, allowing for water to pass through. The items are removed and disposed of properly so that the water can continue on. These screens aren't going to capture everything. For example, rocks that you may not want to go through your treatment system and pumping because uh, it may cause a lot of damage in the process need to be removed. So the first step is we slow the uh, water down and allow for the rocks and any other heavy material that made its way through the treatment uh, bar screens to then be settled out. And that's the purpose of these large grit tanks. There's two of these large grit tanks uh, and the rocks and whatnot float down to the bottom and the water continues on. Now our treatment plant can handle a lot of water. On a typical day we handle between 20 and 25 million gallons of wastewater that gets treated. To do this we have to lift the water higher so that gravity can take over and go through the first step of the treatment process after pretreatment. These large screw pumps do that. Each one of these pumps can pump between 60 and 70 million gallons of wastewater every day. In an emergency situation where we have a heavy downpour, let's say across the area, our treatment plant has emergency pumping that can uh, cause the plant to handle up to about 154 million gallons of water per day. So after the water goes through the raw screw pumps, it goes through these two chambers where uh, other grit is also uh, removed by settling out. And then the water really enters the, the phase of treatment. It's called these primary clarifiers, uh, which is what you see on your screen right now. It slows the water down so that other settleable material can settle to the bottom and water, clearer water you'll notice, starts to pass over the weirs and get sent along for further treatment. The next stage in this process is a biological process. So uh, we use microbiology to make that happen. And we've asked Chad Ford from our operations department to describe this process in detail for you. So we're standing at our EVPR system, which stands for Enhanced Biological Phosphorus Removal. This is our heart, the heartbeat of our, of our plant right here. Uh, this is after our primary tanks, where the primary sewage overflows the weir and comes to the influent of aeration. Uh, so in the primaries, all the heavy solids were uh, taken out of the process and uh, comes over to the EVPR system and uh, we remove the organics. Uh, and the way we do that is we create an environment for the bacteria to thrive that will consume the organics. And the way we create that environment is we, we uh, pump air into the tanks. And we try to maintain a 2.0 2 to 3.0 dissolved oxygen level. Just like us needing to be, be able to breathe, the bacteria need to be able to breathe so that they can do their job. So this creates the environment to, uh, for the bacteria to thrive, which in turn keep the organics 
that are in the system and it cleans our water. Thanks Chad for explaining that. So after water goes through the secondary aeration gallery, which is what Chad was talking about, the water then needs to be slowed down again in these secondary clarifiers. The purpose of these clarifiers is to again have settleable solids, including the microbiology that is frankly just eaten too much and can't eat anymore, settle down to the bottom. So since the microbiology does the work, we can now remove that microbiology that has eaten all the bad stuff, as you'd say, in the wastewater. So that, like you see here, we now have cleaner water that rises to the top, overflows the weirs, and goes on for further treatment. But the entire plant has a series of underground pipes that I think, uh, although it's kind of neat to think about it, I think it's better to see it in person. So what we're going to do now is go down the stairwell of one of these buildings and take you to these series of underground pipes that just exists under the secondary process. Now keep in mind when you're looking at these pipes and we go down the stairwell here, this is just one of the series of pipes. We have another uh, series at various locations throughout the treatment plant. So as we go down the stairwell here, right in front of you, you'll see one of the very large pumps that we use to either pump water, maybe to back to the treatment process or, or maybe to another area of the treatment plant that uh, it's needed. We can control flow using these pumps. And because we can control the flow, we can also determine the amount of microbiology that needs to go back into the treatment process because let's say bugs get hungry. And when bugs get hungry, they're ready to eat more. So when they go and eat more, they remove more of the organic material from the water. And when they do that, they leave the water cleaner once the bugs are settled out. Right here in front of you, you'll notice green process air. And these green pipes are filled with air that gets returned or sent rather to the secondary process that Chad was talking about. These other pipes return water in various places throughout the plant as I mentioned. I mean, this is approximately 30 or 40 feet below ground. So now that we've gone through the secondary process, we wanted to take a moment to show you the other type of clarifier we have. This is a round clarifier. So the secondary clarifier we looked at to begin with was rectangular, and that was an original, uh, original clarifier from when the treatment plant was uh, built back in the late 1920s. We also have round secondary clarifiers that are just larger in size, and many of them were built later we have eight secondary clarifiers. So the next step in the process is a tertiary process. Back in the 1970s is when the United States Environmental Protection Agency was formed. And when they were formed, they also imposed new limits on treatment plants for ammonia removal. So GPSD, like a lot of treatment plants across the country, had to install new processes, and that is uh, what you're seeing now. Rotating biological contactors in our treatment plant are used for ammonia removal. We call these RBCs, and there's 84 of these white units, uh, or white huts, and within each one of these huts is a rotating cylinder that you see here that creates an additional type of microbiology that is used essentially solely for ammonia removal. So here uh, it just rotates around and around and this is called a fixed film media. And fixed because the bugs are on the media and eventually again the bugs get full and they have to settle out again. We settle them out a final time through tertiary clarifiers. Again, we slow the water down and we have the bugs settle to the bottom 
and are removed, leaving clear, clean water. So these large tertiary clarifiers, there's two of them that we have here at the treatment plant, are essentially the final stage of, of actual treatment before the water eventually goes into uh, ponds that loop around and the water gets sent to the Illinois River. So here now we are going to take a loop around out of the tertiary clarifiers and into the, what we call them the polishing ponds. It's just a final kind of settle of, of treatment so that uh, any remaining uh, things that may be floating in the water can settle down and that way we make sure we're only sending clean water. But here at the uh, sanitary district we have a large laboratory and we have an operations department. Let's take a quick look at the lab. Uh, in, within the lab, we have testing that happens all the time. We have to report our results to our regulatory authorities uh, constantly. So here is just a snapshot real quick of our lab and we're gonna go to the operations building and have two of our operators, Eric and Seth, talk about our computer system that we use to monitor. This is our SCADA system. We use it to monitor the plant. It shows all of our plant flows. This is one of the main screens I use to monitor how much flow is coming into the plant. Right now we got about 32 coming in, a million gallons a day. So this, basically we, we can, one of our main screens where we can tell what's going on through all the portions of the plant. We've got our tertiary, what's going on out of our primaries our M3s, our M1s, 1-2s, which is different uh, intersectors coming in. This screen over here is a GBT, Gravity Belt Thickener building. Which is our thick and sludge, shows us our pumping rate, shows us our feed wells. We try to monitor, see if the wells are building, make adjustments as needed. Very good indicator of what's going on in the building just by watching the pumping rate. And we also have This is a screen that shows our primaries. Right now we're in tank one. Run 60 minutes in it. They go through uh, 60, typically it's 30 minute cycles. We add time to it if the tank's struggling a little bit. Anyways, that's how we monitor our flow rate through it. We'll just maintain a good steady flow through, through the primary. Thanks guys for giving us a rundown of our SCADA system. So now back out to the plant, it's time to return this water to the Illinois River. This water has been through multiple stages of treatment, mostly biological in nature. It's really amazing that everything we can do within the treatment plant, Mother Nature could do herself, we just happen to do it rapidly. So now we have what's called effluent. Influent is what comes into the plant and effluent is what goes out. And the effluent, as you see here, is making its way down our final channel through our levee to the river. But every now and then, we get a flood. And the treatment plant, as you see here, is a little lower than the surrounding area and it's protected by a levee. So when we have a flood condition, we have to pump the water higher and get it over the levee. And that's the purpose of these effluent screw pumps. You can see a picture of them working right now. So that kind of concludes our tour today. But realize we have almost 70 employees at the district. So whenever you see a GPSD logo on the side of a truck driving around, start thinking about our employees. And here are just a few of them that I happen to get pictures of just driving around the plant to do this tour. Thank you for listening today. I had uh, fun giving this tour to you. If you want to learn more about our process, don't hesitate to contact us. We do give in-person tours to groups or individuals who are just interested in the treatment process.